The Overture to Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight, Ennio Morricone with the Czech National Symphony Orchestra. And you can hear from that score this weekend, tomorrow and Saturday nights at 8 o'clock and Sunday afternoon at 2 at Centennial Concert Hall. Ryan Shore, our guest conductor, will be here with the WSO and he's here right now in the studio and we're going to talk about all of the wonderful things that you have been up to lately. Welcome to the Diamond Lane. Thank you so much. It's so great to be with you. Hey, uh, Ryan, so you started composing super early. Uh, I was doing a little bit of reading. I hear that it was like 11 when you started composing, but were you, were you playing instruments until that point? I was, yeah. I started yeah. with saxophone and okay. really got into the instruments, like playing saxophone, clarinet, flute, and piano. Right. Dabbled a little bit in composing when I first started, and then I got more into it through high school and then uh, a lot more into it in college. Right. Well, and you, I've been, through my reading, I noticed that you were also a, like, more of a collaborative musician while you were going through school than a composer. So tell tell us all about your collaborative adventures because we've been having this uh, Manitoba Band Association's uh, solo and ensemble festival. We've had like a bunch of young musicians come into the studio and they've been you know showing us what they've prepared for this festival that's happening tomorrow. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that journey into collaborative music for you. Yeah. So I. By starting by playing saxophone, I, I really focused mostly on just playing the instruments and mm -hmm. did that for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, by playing saxophone, I got a chance to play in, in a ton of jazz bands, big bands, small groups, uh, but also Latin bands and classical ensembles and really a lot of different types of, of music. When I was uh, in college, I went to Berklee College of Music mm -hmm. and I played all the saxophones. But I noticed that there was there was perhaps more of a demand uh, for baritone sax because it was a little slightly more unique an instrument. So I I took that one up as well, nice. which opened up a lot of opportunities. So there would be all these different ensembles where it would be, you know, a Latin ensemble, and everyone in the band, you know, is you know, speaks Spanish and is is from you know a Latin country. And me on baritone saxophone, <laughs> um, you know, or you know, a gospel, you know, al you know, album or or you know, group where same thing, you know, and and with me on baritone saxophone. So it was like a great opportunity to to play and to learn different styles, meet people, mm -hmm. and uh, and then later I went on tour playing saxophone. I I, I toured with Matchbox Twenty, right. uh, the rock band. Yeah. We did a, a U.S. tour and. Um, and uh, just a lot of different playing and touring. It was a great way to get into music and learn music. Well, and in speaking of some of the people that you've collaborated with, you've collaborated with Barry Manilow, <laughs> Johnny Mathis. I was looking at this list. Natalie Cole, also Arturo Sandoval, and mm. we just spoke about this a moment ago, uh, Jerry Mulligan. And as a saxophone player, like, I mean, how is that for you? That was incredible. That was uh, many summers ago, and I was playing in Bob Brookmeyer's big band. Mm. Uh, Bob Brookmeyer, the late, great uh, valve trombonist and composer. And I was playing in his band, playing saxophone uh, for two summers. And we, we did tours of Germany and, and played a lot of different cities in Germany. And then uh, because Bob is, knows so many people, um, <clears throat> one summer we, we toured uh, with Jerry Mulligan as our guest with the band and also Clark Terry, uh, oh the great God. jazz trumpetist, Amazing. trumpeter. Uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Please. It was an, a fantastic experience, you know, to not only play with them, but also, of course, be able to talk with them, you know, backstage, hanging out in the green room. And it's, uh, they're, they were living legends and uh, it was very clear that they were. It was great. Amazing. Well, how did you get from being such an adamant uh, cl collaborative musician to going into film composition? I know you did a degree at Berkeley. That's what you focused on. Mm -hmm. But uh, and going back to what I was kind of talking about before was you. It wasn't until after your college experience that you really truly settled into composing. So tell yeah. us how that happened. That's true. You know, I think what it was was. I, you know, I was playing in all these bands, and I was playing saxophone and, and doubling on the instruments and, and loving it. And I mm -hmm. still play, and I still keep all of my instruments up, and, and I love to play. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what it was was that I, I have a, a, a real curiosity for music and different styles and different forms and different sounds and, and different instruments. And there were just a lot of sounds that I wanted to explore musically. 
And there were sounds that I felt that I couldn't necessarily explore just by just playing the saxophone. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, particularly, let's say, for example, in classical music, you know, there, there is some saxophone in classical music. Great Mio. Mio loved the saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, and there's the Iber Concerto and yeah. the Blazanov oh, yeah, so and, you know, yeah. and, you know, there's some wonderful, you know, repertoire and mm -hmm. Percy Granger, you know, wrote for the mm -hmm. saxophone, but not a tremendous amount. So it was an opportunity that I saw to be able to pursue composing because it was a way to start exploring all these sounds and write for different instruments. Mm -hmm. It was almost, in a way, it was almost like I felt that, you know, it was, it was just like I, I didn't, it's not like I reached the end of what the saxophone can do by any means, right. but, but it was just an opportunity to like explore other sounds that the saxophone wouldn't allow. Well, and I think that exploration is probably, well, we're having our new music festival coming up, Ryan, and we are uh, inviting Meredith Monk in, mm. in to Winnipeg as well. Uh, so you are in good company of music legendness. Uh, now, Meredith Monk talks a lot about the music of image. Mm -hmm. uh, and for for me, the first time I heard your music, and I had no idea that you actually wrote the score, was in the View Askew mm. uh, Vulgar. <laughs> so that's, I had no idea that you did that. I was like, yeah. I was My like, first film score. That was your first? Yeah. Okay. Okay, and that was like I mean, of course, like Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes were in in the film. All the all the VSQ people. It was Brian Johnson. That's uh, right. right. Yeah, yeah. And so I mean, how did you? But that's I had no idea. That's I'm a little bit of a cult film. I love kid. it. Uh, but uh, how was that for you? What, what what was that full feature film score like? Because you'd also done some short films before that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Boy, you've done your homework. I love it. <laughs> it's very impressive. So, yes, that's exactly right. I started out doing uh, short film scores yeah. uh, at NYU. Um, when I graduated from Berkeley uh, in Boston, I moved to New York City and uh, started scoring short films and working in theater and, and working in all different types of mediums. Mm -hmm. And that all led to this first opportunity of scoring a feature film for uh, Kevin Smith. Um, and for Kevin's company, mm -hmm. and uh, and it was great. First, they we talked about what type of music we could do for the film, and uh, the basic premise of the film uh, is that there's a, a, a kids party clown, mm -hmm. and when work is not going <laughs> very terrible. well for him, I know it's an, <laughs> it's, it's, it's awful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> work is, is going very slow, and he gets this idea that he's going to market his skills in all new ways. Still dressing as a clown, but this time with fishnets, garter belt, and high heels. And it would sh he would show up at a party as a gag. Yeah. And the first party he goes to, turns out that it's, his, it's just a father and his two delinquent sons, and it, everything goes horribly wrong. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then he, uh, see, you know, uh, the lead clown character uh, seeks revenge, mm -hmm. and um, that's the basic premise. So. Right. I remember when when we when I first sat down with the filmmakers and we watched the movie with Brian and and uh, and I was watching the movie and they were laughing so much and and I was thinking wow some of these characters and seemed legitimately scary you know and so what I gathered from that meeting was perhaps the response they might like the audience to have is the same one they had right. where they're laughing mm -hmm. and so. Uh, we came up with the idea of doing a jazz score for it, where we could use jazz music to go through all the different ups and downs of the character and tell that story and, and you know paint with all those emotions. But because it's jazz, perhaps we could also point up perhaps a feeling of accessibility or levit, you know, uh, yeah. levity, mm -hmm. you know, where um, perhaps it would give the audience a license to laugh. And that's how we, we came up with that approach. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, it was successful. <laughs> I mean, it, it was those ha 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 laughs. <laughs> of just oh, like, thanks. oh, gosh, <laughs> that's happening. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's how it felt like the entire time I watched it. Yes. <laughs> it was um, great. Very good It's job. amazing you saw that movie. <laughs> that job. was from some time ago. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, in college, that's what you do right yeah. when you're yeah anyway yeah uh, but uh, also um, another film that was notable I had no idea that you scored was that film Prime it wasn't necessarily mm. my favorite movie but it had Uma Thurman and, and Meryl Streep in it yeah which is amazing and you've also you were nominated for a Grammy in mm -hmm. 2012 for The Shine which is it, it was a Canadian movie it was yes and uh, it was you were up against like King's Speech and Black Swan that's right holy goodness yeah. so it must have been I have not seen it I have to admit, I haven't seen it. That's I haven't gone that far in my research. Well, you're not but, you're not alone. Uh, there are many people who haven't seen the film. But that's incredible. I mean, obviously, the score was of 
of, of some note if you're <laughs> if you're up against these guys. Not only that, it was what else was in there? Oh, uh, Daft Punk, the yeah, Tron. Yeah, Daft Punk for tr- for Tron, oh and also gosh. Harry Potter. One oh of the yeah, Harry that's Potter right. Movies. The other Despla. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. Oh, crazy. I don't I'm, even know. I'm pretty certain there are more people who worked on Harry Potter than that even saw the shrine. <laughs> Probably that might be true. That might be true. But hey, that's okay. Now it's an excuse for our listenership to go and seek out the shrine. Absolutely. Specifically for its incredible soundtrack. Wow, that would be wonderful. Yeah, okay. Well, we should do that. Uh, You know what? Speaking of, uh, I think it's about time for a break. We're going to come back and talk a little bit about the program, maybe just a little bit more about film scoring and what that means. But uh, we're going to have something from someone else you have collaborated with, John Williams. Mm -hmm. We're going to go scherzo for Mm X-Wing. Yeah. Are you guys going to play this uh, on Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Okay, yes. so something you can hear on this weekend's program, the WSO Presenting Soundtracks Live, with guest com- conductor and composer of film and television scores, among other things, I'm sure, uh, Ryan Shore. Uh, and uh, yeah, here we have John Williams conducting uh, the studio orchestra. John Williams conducting the studio orchestra in the Scherzo for X-Wings from The Force Awakens. And we are in the studio with our guest conductor for the weekend, Ryan Shore. He'll be conducting tomorrow night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Uh, Soundtracks Live is the program. For more info, wso.ca is the place to go. Welcome back. Thank you. It's great <laughs> it to be here. A little short break. Uh, so, Fred, um, I, I'm, forgive me. I, I'm assuming that we're now friends because we've been yes. having really great chats. Okay, great. Um, let's talk... We're going to talk a little bit more about your film music, and then we're going to talk about your video game music and kind of how how that changes your perspective a little bit. So mm-hmm. you're you're a music for purpose writer mostly, right? Like you you write That's right. m- mostly for for film, and, and you did a video game. Was your first video game? It was like 20, 2012. Yeah, that's correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So video games super different Mm -hmm. but both of us we were talking about growing up with them a little bit and particularly spy hunter yeah which has the the mancini uh peter gunn theme that that's right i remember playing that on an amber and black screen and it was (laughs) so epic and the oil slicks were my favorite yeah um hey so you this was the reboot this was like the new spy hunter you got to do this that's right so did you did you use any of that mancini-ness i did actually that that was one of the uh early discussions that we had which was can we use this theme you know, it's so associated, integrally associated with, with the game. Yeah. And so they did clear the rights to have the Peter Gunn theme. Um, however, uh, they they didn't clear any recordings of it. So I had to recreate a new recording of oh. the Peter Gunn theme. Okay. And the direction that they wanted to do, which I loved, was they wanted to take that theme for big band, where you have trumpets and trombones, saxophone, rhythm section, right. and, uh, and then... For me to take that music and kind of reconceive it in a way where I would, I, I took that exact music and then I also composed a lot of my own music that was sort of cut from that same big band cloth. Mm. Then I took all of that material, including the, the Peter Gunn music, and then remixed all of it with all new drum beats and loops and scratching and synths and, and vocal effects and, and sort of like gave it a whole new re reconception for the game. So what's the big difference between writing for an electronic score or writing an electronic digital score versus orchestrating something for live orchestra? What's the what's the big shift for you in that? Well, uh, for one, the what you can do with each of those groups is 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 drastically different, mm-hmm. um, particularly on the synthesizer side. You know, because then you have opened up a world of sounds and you and and production techniques, mm-hmm. and uh, and also specifically since we're speaking about the game, that I could even take recordings of acoustic instruments like the big band and strings and cut those up. Mm-hmm. So. Um, that's one of the big differences I would say with electronic music is the ability to be very creative, not only in the composition, but in the production of it as well. Mm. And speaking of rehashing, uh, old music and revitalizing it, uh, on the program as well this weekend is, uh, The Magnificent Seven. So this mm-hmm. film, its original score, Elmer Bernstein, mm-hmm. uh, which was like hugely formative moment for me uh, in terms of just how I saw film. And I hope for you, too. Yes, iconic. Yeah. So but you're doing the new one. That's right. So tell us a little bit about those. Those Are, are there references from the old Magnificent Seven score into the new one? Or Yeah. So this score uh, that, that we'll be performing our suite from that score on the concert mm-hmm. was composed by James Horner, right. the late, great James Horner, one of the most 
most uh, prolific and incredible uh, composers in film music. Huge influence on me because um, so many of the films that he scored during his incredible career are, are the years that I was growing up. So when I was just going to the movies because it was Friday night, mm-hmm. a lot of movies I would see would be James Horner's. Um, so it was composed by James and and he... Uh, tragically passed away uh, recently and um, and so this is actually his final score Um, and he had already composed themes uh, for the film and uh, and then they were later uh, you know brought to life by by uh, his collaborator his longtime collaborator Simon Franklin Mm -hmm. Um, you'll hear in the score there 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 are uh, homages to to um, the feel of the score that Elmer Bernstein composed, mm-hmm. um, that very famous bum bum ba dum bum ba dun 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 dun. So uh, there, 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 there's 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 echoes of that type of music, uh, and James found a way of, of doing his his own uh, ways of doing those as well. Excellent. Oh, so looking forward to it. I mean, it's going to be a cinematic experience regardless. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the the grandeur of 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 symphonic cinematic scores. They're just it's another level of communication. So let's talk a little bit about the rest of the program. Uh, so there's Hateful Eight, Magnificent mm-hmm. Seven, Force Awakens of Star Wars. Uh, what else can we expect on the program? Uh, we're doing uh, Zootopia and Storks and. Uh, Kubo and the Two Strings. Um, we're doing a suite of mine that I composed for an animated film uh, called The Legend of Muay Thai Nine Satra. Uh, okay. This will actually be a world premiere of this piece because the, it's, I wrote it for a, a film that's going to be coming out later this year. So it, the movie hasn't even come out yet. Uh, so that will be on, on the program. Uh, we'll also be doing Doctor Strange. And That's Benedict Cumberbatch, right? He's in that one. Is, is that, yeah, mm-hmm. he's in, okay. Um, so uh, uh, we're doing Now You See Me Too and uh, uh, X-Men Apocalypse. Okay. Um, there's a number, number of scores we're doing on it. I believe there's going to be about 10 world premieres on this concert. Wow. Wow. So things that have never appeared on the concert stage here in Winnipeg for the first time yes. with Ryan Shore conducting this established film and television composer who has worked with a whole lot of really amazing people, not just, you know, Kevin Smith and Viewers uh, for us cult folk out there, but also guys like Jerry Mulligan. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. unreal, man. Thank and you. you're still a young one in composer <laughs> aged. Like you're 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 still got every bit ahead of you, too. Like looking forward to seeing what else you're doing. Thank you so much. Hey, Man, thanks for coming by and thanks for joining us here in Winnipeg. This is your first time. I, I forgot to mention. So you were born in Toronto. Let's just have this little chat yeah. before we we go back to a little bit more music. But you were born in Toronto and and then you you left. Yeah. So I was born in Toronto and my entire family moved to the United States when I was about four years old. Okay. So I'm I'm still Canadian. Yeah. And half my family okay. is in Toronto and I come yeah. back all the time to visit. Yeah. And. Uh, um, but I grew up in Florida, and then uh, um, this is my very first time in Winnipeg. Unbelievable. Well, welcome. Thank I hope, you. I hope it is a warm... Well, I mean, it's, the weather's kind of beautiful right now. It's I hope it incredible. Is a, all right. I've heard it's not usually like this. Do you this. see our mountains of snow on the sides of the road? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Shore joining us for this weekend's Soundtracks Live uh, at the WSO Centennial Concert Hall Friday tomorrow and Saturday nights at 8 and Sunday afternoon at 2. Uh, we're so pleased to have you. Thank you for sharing these scores with us and Thank you. your perspective on the world of film music and otherwise. Thanks so much for having me on and hope to see you at the shows. Yeah, definitely. Thanks.